Today we're going to talk about how to install an I2C Blink M on the Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.4. So the first thing that we need to do is locate where the I2C pins are. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the web browser for a moment and we're going to find out where it is in its diagram for the pinouts. So I'm going to click over on the web browser. And as you can see right here, we have the Big Tree Tech SKR 1.3. It's located in here in a subfolder for 1.4. Now we're going to go to the hardware and we're going to find the pinouts for the SKR version 1.4. Now we're going to be working with the turbo. So there may be some variability, but in this case, probably not. So as you can see, there's I2C right here. And then we have two pins that are signal pins. We have a ground and voltage. So now we need to know where the pinouts are for the Blink M. So we're gonna go over to the Blink M website and as you can see, you have power right on this side and the black pin that they have marked here is ground. Then they have voltage. Then they have D which is for data and then they have C, which is for clock. So that's how you send data back and forth with I2C. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook this up in just a second. So let's go back over and see how to do this. So I'm gonna pick up the I2C here and I'm going to use black first to connect to the board. So I'm gonna locate that on the board and as you can see, it's the second pin over that we just looked up. And then on the top of this, we're going to use the cheat sheet and it's plus and minus. So we're going to connect to the minus, which is going to be ground in this case. Next, we're going to connect voltage, which is right down here. And we're going to connect that to our plus on here. Next, we're going to connect what's known as our data. So in this case, we're going to just pick it random in case we get this backwards. And then we're going to connect it over here for the first pin. Then we'll connect the clock. And if we get this backwards, these two can be reversed, but hopefully we'll get this right the first time. So there it is. I'm gonna put something here to hold it in place so that we can work with it. And then what we need to do is actually hook up a screen. And the reason I'm gonna do this is so I can show you how to control it through your screen as well. So we've done this before, so I'm going to do this kind of quick. So on the back side of here, we have EXP1 and 2. So we're going to find EXP1 over here and connect it. Then we're going to find EXP1 on the board and connect that as well. Then we're going to find EXP2 over here. And we're going to connect EXP2 over here. And then we'll put this down off to the side. So let me slide this over and try and organize this a little for you. So there we go. So we're going to add power just to see if things are working. And that means that we need to be on USB power. Currently it is on USB power, but there's three pins. These two pins right here would be power from your power supply. And in this case, we want power from the USB. So we're gonna put it right there. So I'm gonna plug this in. This should light up as well as the LCD. So they both lit up. So the next thing that we wanna do is actually set this up so that we can actually control it. So we're gonna go over to VS Code. And inside VS Code, we're actually going to load Marlin firmware. So I'm gonna click over here, then I'm gonna click open, then go to my downloads folder, my Marlin 2.0, 
my Marlin 2.0 that I've unzipped or extracted, then select the folder. Now to check the actual version, because a new one just came out and some of the actual steps have changed, we're gonna click on the Marlin folder, then the source, or excuse me, not on the Marlin folder source, but on version. And then we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna find the version number. And in this case, it's 2.0.8. So now that we know that, we know that we're working with a new version. Now let's set up the board and we know this is a turbo. So we're gonna to go to source, core, boards.h and we're gonna search on SKR. And down here, we have the turbo board. So we're gonna highlight this, then we're gonna copy it so let me highlight that, copy it. Then I'm gonna close out of boards.h after noting that we're in the processor for the LPC 1769. I'm gonna minimize core and source and go to configuration.h. In here, I'm gonna search on motherboard and I'm gonna highlight the ramps board and paste our board over it. Next, I'm gonna change the serial port to negative one that'll allow us to communicate with the board. Then I'm going to have to set up the Blink M. So I'm gonna search on Blink M, and right here is where it's located. So I'm gonna remove the comment to enable it. And then we need to enable the RepRap underscore discount. And there's two of these, so it's the second one which is the RepRap Discount Full Graphics Smart Controller. So I'm gonna remove the comment, and that now enables our actual display. Now that'll allow us to actually do some communication in a moment, but we still need to go over to Configuration Advanced, and we have to enable some stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna search on LED Control Menu. And this will add a menu option to our ability to work with the LED. So I'm gonna remove the comment for LED control menu, and this will enable choices. Now the default choices, as you can see, are for red, it's 255, which means full color red. Then we have green, which is 128. And then we have white and blue. Now blue is zero, so I'm gonna change these, being the 255 for the red, the green, and I'm going to illuminate blue, hopefully. So I'm gonna do 255, and then white, I'm going to move to, we'll say 10. Now we're also gonna do a mod right here for define LED preset startup. So what we're gonna do is we're going to enable this. And this hopefully, it says according to this, have printer display the user preset color on startup. So we didn't define an actual user preset, which is okay. We're just trying to try out these settings. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually going to go to platform io.ini and set up our ini. Now it's changed. The default environment still for the Mega 2560, but they moved the actual inis over here into subfolders. So what we need to do is go over here to the ini folder and find our board, which is located right here, which is the LPC 1760x.ini and we're gonna find the LPC 1769 in there. So we're gonna copy that. Then we're gonna minimize that folder, go back to platformio.ini, and paste our new environment. And so before we clean, because we have a default envi environment for the 2560, we're gonna use a clean down here to clean it out. Then we're actually going to build and then upload our changes to our board. So let's check on the board real quick so that we can see what the actual settings are. So if I have the board 
down here on the D drive, you can see it says firmware.cur. That was the last recent load of the firmware. So I'm going to minimize that for a second. And I'm going to do the upload button so that we can see what happens. This may take a few moments. If you get an error, first try compiling a second time or do a clean and then compile. If you have a third time that it fails, what you can then do is find the very first error that you encounter and rectify that in the actual output that you're seeing in the bottom of the window. But usually it fails on the first time. I don't know why it might be that they're building something out of order. And so the second time through that may be built. So it looks like it's going to actually pass this time for a build. So it does look like it uploaded successfully to the D drive. So let's double check that real quick. And as you can see, it now exists. So let's go over to the workbench where we have this. And what we're going to do to actually load it is remove the drive, then plug it back in. And you'll see when it loads, the actual drive will tell us on the LED what version we're working with. And as soon as it finishes loading, it goes to blue. So we know it's actually successful in this case. So now I want to show you how to modify that in Pronterface. And this might be somewhat of a challenge. So I'll show you how to actually figure it out. So let's go over here first. And as you can see, it's set, set to COM port 1. Now we have an issue that we need to figure out, and that's what device we're using. So we're going to search on Device Manager. And we're going to open this up and we're going to find the port number. So the port number in this case is 13. So let's check to see if we actually have it. We don't, so we have to highlight, then add the three, then connect. And you can see now that it's connecting and printer is now online. So let's check the status of our build here. So I'm going to do an M. 503 to see what our settings are and these are our current settings now there's another M code or G code that you can use to figure out what your build is I don't rem remember it off the top of my head so I'll have to think about that but for now we need to figure out what the G code is to actually control the actual blink M so I'm gonna go back over to the browser for a second and in the browser, I'm going to go over to Marlin G codes that I looked up. And so it's M150 to set it. And this is relevant or requires a blink M. And then there's different colors that you can set. As you can see right here, if you want to set the brightness, it's going to be P. Red is going to be R. U is going to be green. And W is going to be white and then B over here is blue and the range is from 0 to 255 so if we scroll down here we can find an example so let's try blue initially just to see what happens but we're already on blue so I think we'll pick this one over here which is uh, red but let's see how well that works so I'm gonna copy this full command and I'm gonna go over to Pronterface and see what happens. So in Pronterface, we're gonna check to see what happens with the LED by pasting the command down here and then clicking Enter. And as you can see, it's changed to red. So let's try a different color. So if we go back over to the web browser for a second, we can review what the colors are. And what you can see is there's something for green over here. So let's give that a try. So we'll go back over to Pronterface and we'll change the R to a U. As soon as I get the focus set here. And then we'll press enter and see what happens. And it goes to green. 
So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And thank you for your time.